Hello, it's Charles Cherney, and today I'd like to share with you the neighborhood of East Cambridge and Kendall Square. So when we speak of East Cambridge, we're looking at a neighborhood that is bordered on the north by Somerville, on the east by the Charles River, on the south more or less by Broadway, finally on the west bordered by the Grand Junction Railroad tracks. Most of the streets that define the neighborhood of East Cambridge form a grid, and although Kendall Square is located below Broadway, technically speaking. It is thought of Kendall Square by many, myself included, as part and parcel of East Cambridge. Main Street is the main thoroughfare for Kendall Square. The thing is, is that as the Broad Canal neighborhood and the Third Street area north of Broadway in East Cambridge develops as a neighborhood, this emerging area is often thought of as an extension, if you will, of Kendall Square, you could say makes it part of East Cambridge. So when people think of East Cambridge and Kendall Square, they think of them at one and the same time. And so I'm considering them together in this video. I'd like to look at landmarks in the neighborhood, actual parks, last but not least, real estate to give you, generally speaking, a feeling for the neighborhood. Online, I have a guide for a lot of what I'm discussing about East Cambridge in this video. You can find it at discovereastcambridge.com, where there are links to the various things uh, that we're looking at. So starting with the landmarks that define the, the neighborhood, first and foremost is the old Edward J. Sullivan Courthouse. This brutalist building was constructed in the years 1968 to 74. It's some 22 stories and 300 plus feet tall, it towers over the neighborhood. The actual address is 40 Thorndike Street, and a developer has been seeking since about 2012 to renovate this building as for the most part, office space. It's been fought by a group of neighbors who opposed the project. I think from the moment it went up, there's been a contingent uh, that wishes that it would come down. So what ends up happening with this building uh, in the future remains to be seen. There's been approval and then it's been put on hold and then there's been approval and then it's been put on hold. So where it ends up and what ends up happening with this building, we'll see what happens. But it's a strong felt presence. If you're anywhere near this, it's just astounding that they ever were granted permission to build it. And uh, that's, in fact, why many people would like to see it come down. But uh, I remember being in the building when it was an active courthouse. In fact, there was a jail on the top floors, if you can imagine, once upon a time. So there's some history at this towering building, the tallest in Cambridge. We'll see what happens with it. Another landmark in East Cambridge is the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds, which locals call the Cambridge Registry of Deeds. It's at 208 Cambridge Street, and it's distinguished by its neoclassical brick columns that tower over the block. As it happens, you don't climb those steps to enter. You instead enter via a door underneath the steps and go through security to enter in. Over the years as a real estate agent, I've attended many closings at the Registry of Deeds since this is where all sales are recorded. It's oftentimes convenient for buyers, sellers, and their attorneys to gather here in the great room under the rotunda to pass papers and then get in line to record the sale at the registry within the building. That being said, even if you close at an attorney's office, ultimately the sale will be recorded at the registry of deeds here in Cambridge. Next, I'd like to just call attention to the Leechmere Green Line station serving Boston. And actually the, the Leechmere station is being rebuilt on the other side of the McGrath O'Brien Highway, land belonging to the Cambridge Crossing uh, development complex. The existing Leechmere station closed in 2019. Uh, there's bus service now to Boston until such time as the new station is completed on the other side of the highway, not far from the, the station Leechmere on the green line that just closed. So this station, the new Leechmere station will be sort of the beginning of the green line extension that will take the green line into Somerville and Medford, extending out beyond the Leechmere station. So it's exciting. It's uh, been an ongoing project for quite some time. When it actually comes to completion, we'll see. But uh, progress is finally uh, some measure happening. And I, I'm imagining we will finally get there. The green line extension will, will come online, if you will. Next, I wanted to note the one sort of large mall in Cambridge is located in East Cambridge. It's 
the Cambridge side mall it used to be called the Cambridge side Galleria. Some people still call it that. Um, it dates from 1990. Uh, there are some 80 odd stores that make it up. For me, a favorite port of call at the mall, Cambridge side is the Apple store. It's just so surprising that there's a true mall in Cambridge, but here it is in East Cambridge. It's quite popular, has all the usual suspects that you'd expect to find in a mall. Kendall Square itself would be what I would say is the next landmark. We talked or I talked about how technically it's just a little south of Broadway. It's a neighborhood that Kendall Square is hard to define the borders of, and it does bleed into East Cambridge proper. And it does have a red line station that is giving people easy access to Kendall Square coming from Boston or further afield from Somerville or neighboring parts of Cambridge is found on Main Street, which is the main drag in Kendall Square. There's so many high tech firms like Microsoft and Google and Twitter and others with offices in Kendall Square. And it's ground zero, of course, for the biotech industry. And there's just so much office and lab space serving the biotech world in Kendall Square. Really, it's it's a landmark. It is what is in the minds of many, the, the beating heart of East Cambridge. There is also the Cambridge Police Quarters, which are located on 6th Street in East Cambridge. That building opened in December of 2008. And the prior Cambridge Police Headquarters was in a building in the heart of Central Square where the police were for 75 years. So this is the new 6th Street Headquarters. It's a nice reality for East Cambridge to have the principal headquarters of the Cambridge Police Department located in the neighborhood. In addition to these landmarks, you could consider Cambridge Street itself as a sort of destination in East Cambridge. It's the main commercial thoroughfare with many shops, services, and restaurants found on it. Two favorite ports of call of mine in East Cambridge along Cambridge Street are first Curio, a cafe that serves Belgian waffles. It's a, a real uh, treat to go in there to have one. Love that. And then there's the Elmendorf uh, Baking Supply and Cafe, and that's located in the former PT Pie space on Cambridge Street. And I love going in there for a homemade sandwich or a cup of coffee. It's a very friendly place with great owners who are always welcoming to people. So, you know, there's quite a few things to discover on Cambridge Street that make East Cambridge a unique neighborhood. And I encourage you to uh, spend more time at discovereastcambridge.com to learn more about all of the places that you'll find in East Cambridge. In addition to these landmarks that make the neighborhood, there are quite a few parks. And this is one of the things that makes Cambridge just such a great place to live, that there are such nice parks. So in East Cambridge, there are substantial larger spaces. Uh, and first on the list is the newest park in East Cambridge, which is the Rogers Street Park. And it's located along Rogers Street, hence the name, between 2nd and 3rd Street. And it's actually in, uh, as I make this video, the middle of being renovated and made even more special. There's a dog park within the park. There is going to be a playing field, uh, sitting areas. Uh, it's a substantial green space. And it really, with all the new construction of office buildings around it, just sort of popped up and is a big new green space for the neighborhood, which is great. I'm, I'm grateful that the city created this space and that it's there. I think that they're aiming to uh, make it known officially as the Timothy J. Toomey Park, but myself and many others have thought of it since it came to be as the Rogers Street Park. There is as well the John A. Ahern Field, which is located behind the Cambridge Longfellow School. And this green space gets a lot of use. There is nearly always someone there. There's a soccer game on a regular basis being played in this field. And there's actually a hardscaped park next to the soccer field that's used for outdoor hockey games, which is a real throwback. And I love when I walk by and there's a hockey game going on uh, at this park. There's also a tot lot that's associated with this park right next to Longfellow School and known as Longfellow Park. So it's a big active green space and park. There's the Leachmere Canal Park, which is located behind Cambridge side, the mall. And it's more or less a linear park designed by the landscape architect Carol Johnson terminates at a circular basin with a tall jet fountain at its center. If you've ever been to Geneva, it may remind you of the jet d'eau found there. So Cambridge has its own uh, jet fountain. It's really nice how it's situated right behind Cambridge side. The Charles River Boat Company docks its boat here for 
Charles River tours, and those are a lot of fun. They take you up the river towards Harvard Square and back, and uh, they can be uh, a great way to pass a summer evening. In addition to these principal parks in East Cambridge, there's quite a few uh, wonderful smaller parks, among them Costa Lopez Park and Community Garden between 2nd and 3rd Street with the community garden plots and raised beds here. They're very popular with people who live in the neighborhood. There's also a play area for children and a pathway and seating areas that make this a very nice park. In addition, there is the Hurley Street Park. It's about a third of an acre and it's a park that was renovated in 2015. Again, there are planting beds and sitting areas and a play area for young children and it's very well maintained. Uh, Silva Park is a pocket park Again, it's about a quarter acre, maybe a third at the corner of uh, Otis and Sharapa streets, play area for children and a sitting area. And again, these are pocket parks that get used, that are well-maintained, that are pleasant to walk by, nice to spend time in and really make uh, the neighborhood. Another one of these little parks is Front Park that fronts on Edwin Land Boulevard, looks out at the Charles River and has a distinctive sculpture at the entrance to it. It's just a wonderful green space. Again, just to even go by it is really nice. It's, uh, it's great to have these little parks in addition to the larger uh, outdoor spaces. And last but not least, uh, and this is probably the most famous green space in East Cambridge, Kendall Square, is the Cambridge Center Roof Garden. And it's located atop the parking garage at 4 Cambridge Center. You know, it's not every day you find a park up on a roof, especially one as nice as this with its city views and pathways, benches and picnic tables. It's a perfect place to have lunch and pass an hour on your break. So I love the Roof Garden Park. With all of the landmarks and parks, of course, there is real estate that defines the East Cambridge Kendall Square area as well. And I just wanted to touch on uh, first the five concierge buildings in the neighborhood. First is uh, Cambridge Crossing. And this is the newest neighborhood, if you will, in Cambridge where Somerville, Cambridge and Boston meet above uh, Leachmere Station and close to Boston. At this time, there's just two buildings, condo buildings on Earhart Street completed and are occupied. But the development of this 45-acre parcel uh, calls for somewhere on the order of 5 million square feet of space. It'll be, when it's kitted out and completed, a mix of office, retail, restaurant, and residential. So it's an emerging new neighborhood near the new Leachmere Station, and I expect in the years to come, it will uh, become increasingly known as more and more people live and work in Cambridge Crossing. Another concierge building in East Cambridge is one first, and this is a large uh, five building uh, development that takes up a city block. The front entrance is at 150 Cambridge Street, and then it borders on Cambridge Street, 1st and 2nd Street, and Otis Street, and together the buildings uh, surround a central courtyard. So it's, uh, it's a bigger complex with quite a few units all together in the five unit complex. It dates from 2008 and there's a, a common roof deck I've been on in showing the building when taking buyers through that offers uh, nice views of the city of Boston and the surrounding area. In addition, there is a concierge building at Thomas Graves Landing. The address is 4-6 Canal Park. And it's one of three buildings in East Cambridge, concierge buildings built in the year 1989. It overlooks the Leachmere Canal and the uh, water jetty, the park there. And it has some 160 units many of which uh, have balconies overlooking the canal and the water jetty. There is as well at 10 Rogers Court, the building known as uh, 10 Rogers Street, the building known as River Court uh, with 166 units on 14 floors, Again, many with views onto the Charles River and the Boston skyline. Last but not least in this trio from 1989 is the Esplanade at 75-83 Cambridge Parkway with two L-shaped towers sitting on a distinctive three-story base. It was designed by the architect Moshe Softy, and there's some 206 residences at this address. It's really something when you're on the red line coming from Boston over the Longfellow Bridge to Cambridge, you can see it out the window and it really is extraordinary with its distinctive L-shaped towers 
And as the towers are not straight up, but set back one floor a little bit set off from the other, they create nice vistas and views from the units that face the Charles River and the city of Boston. So it's a very special concierge building in East Cambridge. I thought I'd share as well three properties that I have listed and sold in East Cambridge to give you a sense of uh, the real estate outside the concierge buildings. Starting first with a loft style two bed, two bath on Fulkerson Street, in a former barrel factory. And the residence features soaring 15 foot ceilings. It's located on the second floor. The building does have an elevator and it features parking. And Fulkerson Street, where this building is situated, is really a true residential street. It's a quiet locale. Next, I wanted to share uh, a duplex on Second Street that I listed and sold. It's a three bed, two and a half bath with about 1600 square feet, distinguished by its exposed beams and gas fire fireplace in the living room. It does feature a private patio garden that's really tucked away and a place apart in the heart of the city, something that you'll come upon on occasion in East Cambridge with residences making the most of what dense city fabric offers. Third, I'd like to share a pair of townhomes renovated by a developer on Charles Street in East Cambridge that feature just over a thousand square feet each on three floors. Wonderful city homes. The developer started with an older building that was gutted to the studs and made new again. The renovations here date from 2014. It's just wonderful to see places like this that are given a new lease on life and become a part of the renewed urban uh, fabric of the neighborhood. So there's quite a few wonderful places in East Cambridge. Cambridge, you can see what's now for sale in the neighborhood by visiting my website, cambridgerealestate.com. And I'd be happy to be of assistance if you're looking to learn more about East Cambridge or the residential real estate for sale in it. My name is Charles Cherney, and I'm a top realtor here to help you buy the right home or sell for the best price, or just answer your questions about the market, the community, and your home. So reach out at any time. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the neighborhood of East Cambridge. It's a wonderful place and I'd love to share more with you about it. East Cambridge and Kendall Square. Take care.